Hi everybody, I wanted to work through case 7 with you, um, mostly because there's an interesting way to find the area of especially figures that are irregular as far as it's not going to be convenient to count or um, even to find certain lengths that you might want to use if you were using an area formula. So I've already plotted these points and to look at it, it kind of looks like it might be a rhombus. At least it looks like a parallelogram. So let's determine first if it is indeed a parallelogram by finding the slopes of all four of the sides. So for the slope of AB, you would have 5 minus 11 over negative 8 minus 1. And that gives you a negative 6 over a negative 9, or a positive 2 thirds. Uh, for the slope of CD, you would have 5 minus a negative 1 over 11 minus 2, which gives you 6 over 9 and a positive 2 thirds again. So then those two sides are parallel. AB is parallel to CD. So I will mark those. And we'll do the next two. So the slope of BC is 11 minus 5 over 1 minus 11. And that gives you 6 over negative 10 which reduces to a negative 3 fifths. It doesn't matter if your negative's in the top, the bottom, or out front of the whole thing. Um, for the slope of AD, you would have 5 minus a negative 1 over negative 8 minus 2. So that gives you 6 over negative 10, or a negative 3 fifths again. So these two are parallel. So we know that it is a parallelogram. We don't know whether or not it is a rhombus. We can check that by finding the distance or the length of all four of the sides, or we could find the slopes of the two diagonals, so straight across from A to C and then from B to D, which is not straight up and down from the appearances of it. Um, we'll go ahead and find the slopes of those just to make sure that it is not a right angle. If it is a right angle, then we have a rhombus. If it's not a right angle, then it's a parallelogram. So the slope of AC is 5 minus 5 over negative 8 minus 11. So you get a 0 on the top, and that um, you would get a negative 19 on the bottom, but that's zero, and that fits with the picture. It seems to be a horizontal line there, so the slope should be zero. Uh, the slope of BD, you would say 11 minus negative one over one minus two. So that gives you 12 over negative one, which as long as you get any sort of number, they're not perpendicular, because if they were perpendicular, you should get an undefined with a zero on the bottom, but we don't get that. We got a number. So that means that those two are not perpendicular. So therefore, it's not a rhombus. It is a parallelogram. So not perpendicular, so not rhombus. Now there is a formula for parallelograms for their area. It involves the base times the height. We could definitely find the length of any of the sides and consider that to be a base. To find then the distance of this height, you would have to know exactly where it hits in a perpendicular way. And that is not a convenient thing at all. 
to do. So there is another method, and this method will work for any figure, actually, and it's especially useful when they are tilted, slanted, and hard to deal with. And that involves making a rectangle that goes around this figure and touches all of the vertices. And you can easily find the area of this rectangle because you just need to know how long each side is. And then the area would be the length times the width. And then what you end up doing, I'm going to call these E, F, G, and H. What you end up doing after you find the area of the whole rectangle is subtracting, in this case, the four triangles areas and triangle areas are pretty easy to find also because it's one half of the base times the height and you can find the base and the height just by counting on this so I'm going to go back to purple here so first we need to find the area of the rectangle E F G H so the area rectangle E F G H. Well, if you count those sides, they are 19 across horizontally and 12 going up and down. So that is 19 times 12, which is 228. Uh, then we need to find the areas of the little triangles. So the first one is E, A, B. So we need to count those. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 6 by 8. So the area of triangle 1 is 1 half times 6 times 8. So that is, well that's 24, but apparently I Counted wrong. Let's see. One, two, four, five, six, two, four, five, oh, nine. Goes all the way across to B. Missed that. So that is nine, not eight. I knew I was supposed to get 27 for that one. So half of 54 is 27. Oh, we need to do area of triangle number two. Let's see if I can count right this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. By one, two, three, four, five, six. So that area is one half of six times ten. So that is thirty. And let's look at triangle number three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that one is going to give us another 27 down here. So that's one half of six times nine. And. And this one is going to be um, just like the second one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You don't always have two that are the same and two others that are the same. We do for this one because parallelograms have symmetry. But if you have a figure that is not a parallelogram, then it's not going to have things that are the same. So then that's times 6 times 10, so that's 30. So then we need to subtract all of those from 228. So I'm going to add them up first. So that's 14, and then 5 and 5 is 10, so 114. So then you do 228 minus the 114, and you actually get a 114 also. So then that is the area of the parallelogram. 
and you may need to use that strategy, hint, hint, for some of the others. So I wanted to show you that. And uh, you're working on four, six, and eight. They are due Wednesday, if I recall correctly, without looking. So double check that. But I believe they're due Wednesday by 11.59 p.m. We'll talk to you next time.